What's going on everybody? So happy whatever day it is. Um, I'm sure most of you, like me, have no clue what day it is anymore, which is kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, hope everybody's getting along okay. And not going bored out of your minds, but today we are doing another TIG welding video. So if you haven't seen the previous two videos that we did, episode one was the basic basics of TIG welding. Episode two was setting your torch up. And today in episode three, we are going to be going over setting up your machine for the very first time. Um, unfortunately, I don't have anything to actually unbox and show you like each individual piece, but we will be going over step by step how you're going to set your machine up and uh, get you started on your uh, your path to TIG welding. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, but just a quick note before we get started with the video, as of me filming this right now, we are seven subscribers away from 20,000. So if you're watching this video and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, it would be awesome if you did because we want to hit 20,000 today. And again, that'll be a huge milestone for this channel, which was just a, you know, a year ago was a little tiny channel with, I, God, I think a year ago we had maybe a thousand subscribers. So we're doing incredibly well. The channel's doing incredibly well, and I appreciate all you guys for watching. So with that being said, let's head over to my Everlast PowerTig 255 EXT, and we'll go over every last little bit of setting this machine up for the first time including plugging it into the wall. So here we go. All right, guys, so here is my Everlast 255 EXT. And right now you see it, it is completely blank. There's nothing plugged into it. Nothing is turned on, nothing is good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over step by step how to set this up to get started with DC TIG welding. We're not gonna get into AC just now. We are going to start with DC TIG welding. And DC TIG welding would include things like mild steel, stainless steel, titanium, Inconel, nothing that has to do with aluminum or magnesium or anything of that nature. We are just going to focus on DC TIG because AC will, we'll get into a whole bunch of other stuff with AC. But for now, we're going to set this up on DC so that you guys can stick two pieces of metal together. So first things first, you obviously have to unbox it, take it out of the box, put it on your cart, put it on your table, put it on your bench, whatever you're going to do. The next thing, the very next thing you're going to want to do is plug the machine in. Now this machine runs, I believe, dual voltage and it's got an adapter that'll do 110 or 220. I choose to plug it into a 30 amp, 50 amp, 220 volt outlet. So now that we got the machine plugged in, what you're going to want to do is just power it up. So we'll come back here on this machine, the power switch is kind of buried down back in there. I don't know if you could see it, but right towards the back of the welder there. So we're going to power that up and make sure that the welder functions. Okay, so now that we know that our welder functions and we don't have to send it back to the manufacturer, we can go ahead and get started plugging everything into the front of this. All right, so I'm gonna do the best I can. I am literally sitting behind the camera and we have it on a tripod, so I'm gonna to try to kind of get in here and show you guys things. But first things first, what we need to start with is we need to start with what the connections are on the front panel. Now, the first connection you have is your negative lead connection. Then you have your argon gas outlet. Then you have your control, and this would be for like a finger switch, a torch switch, um, a variable amperage switch, or in our case, it's going to be a foot pedal. And then you have your positive outlet. Now, things are going to get a little weird from here, and it's going to be, you know, if you're a car guy and you're familiar with electronics at all, it's going to be a little bit weird for you at first when you set these things up because it kind of goes against everything that you're familiar with when it comes to positive versus negative, ground versus hot, you know, that kind of thing. So the first thing we want to do is we want to plug our torch in. Now we have our torch here and this is our torch connector. Now you can see it's got several cables coming out of it and everything else. 
Now here's where it's gonna get weird. Now these hoses are usually red to let you know that this is the torch side. Um, sometimes they're black, but mostly they're going to be either red or black, red mostly. Now, here's the thing that gets a bunch of people freaked out. We are actually going to be plugging the torch into the negative side. And we'll explain this in a little bit more detail as we move on. So with these DIN style connectors, which most of these welders are going to have, you insert them and then you twist them clockwise until they stop. And that locks everything in place. Now the next thing we want to connect is our gas outlet connection. Now our gas outlet connection on this particular CK torch is just a little black quick connect hose that will literally plug in and just snap in. There we go. So now that's plugged in. Now as far as our control goes, there's a little cap. We'll pull the cap off. And this is only going to be related to machines that actually have some sort of amperage control, whether it be a torch switch or you know, a foot pedal or what may, you know, what may be. Some of the older machines were scratch start, so you literally set your amperage, you start the machine up, and then you just, you know, touch the tungsten to the material. But in most cases, these newer welders have, you know, a plug that has foot pedal control or some sort of variable amperage control. So we're going to go ahead and set this up. And now this connector is grooved right there, so it only fits in one way. So once we get that in, we'll screw it down. And once we get this nice and tight, we'll move on to our last connection. There we go, that's tight. Now our last connection on a machine like this is going to be our ground clamp connection. And this is where things get crazy. Again, so our ground clamp, which ground you've always associated with negative, is going to actually slide in, twist, lock to our positive side of the welder. Now again, we're gonna go over this in more detail as to why it is that way, but now that we've got all of our connections made, and just don't mind me, I'm connecting the water cooler here. Most of these won't have a water cooler, so I left it out, but now that we've got all of our connections made, we can go ahead and turn on the welder for the first time and get ourselves set up. All right, so I'm gonna get you guys as close in here as possible so that hopefully you can see. I might zoom this in a little bit as well. But we've got a million different settings on this welder. And some of the newer stuff is a lot more simplified, but because this is an AC-DC welder, it has literally a ton of settings. But remember, we want to set this up for DC right now. So if we look on the machine, we'll be able to find whether or not we're in AC mode or DC mode. And then we'll be able to tell where we stand. So right now, we are set up for high frequency TIG. Our welding amps are at 120. We are currently in AC mode. You can see that by the AC waveform. And we need to change that. So with this particular machine, we can select right here to switch to DC just like that. Or we also have presets. Now these presets I've set up in the machine. So that for instance, when we go to preset two, we're at 65 amps, DC TIG, normal setup, pulse is off, we're using a foot pedal, and we're using high frequency TIG and not lift TIG. So right now this machine is set up on preset number two, 65 amps, DC TIG. So now we are literally ready to weld, but let's talk about something quick. Why do I have this preset set at 65 amps? Well, there's a rule of thumb in the welding world that you basically want to start by utilizing one amp per thousandth of thickness of material. Now, when I weld stainless steel tubing, that stainless steel tubing is roughly 60 thousandths thick. It has a 60 thousandths wall thickness. So I jump up a little bit to 65 amps 
so that I have a little bit of leeway when it comes to being able to tack things quick or what have you. So I go a little bit over. But the, the rule of thumb is one amp per thousandth of thickness of material. So now you are literally ready to weld. The only thing you have to do now is you have to ensure that your gas flow is turned on. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our bottle. And then on this machine, what we have is an actual flow setting, purge gas. I can turn the purge gas on and you'll hear it start flowing out of the torch. And then I can come over to my meter and I can adjust what kind of flow I want. So depending on your cup size, if you're using standard cups, anywhere between 15 and 20 CFH is more than enough. So now we got that set. We can go back to our welder, turn our purge gas off. And folks, we are 100% ready to weld any material that is roughly 65 thousandths of an inch thick. And we're good to go. So with that being said, that is how you set up the welder. That is how you set everything so that you can start welding for your very first time. All right, so now let's take it back to the bench and we'll explain why it is that the leads are so weird. So to fully understand why your ground clamp goes into the positive and your torch goes into the negative, you have to understand a little bit about electricity and how electrons flow and things of that nature. Now, in general, for most of us, for the, the real world, electricity flows in a direction of negative to positive. Electrons flow from a negative source to a positive source. And if you look at a diagram, and I'll see if I can find maybe a picture to put up here in this general vicinity so that you can see the flow of electrons, but electrons always flow from negative to positive. So with that being said, you want your electrons flowing from your torch out into the workpiece. So being that our electrons are flowing negative to positive, we are concentrating all of our heat coming out of the torch and into the part itself. So the part is now taking the majority of the heat because it's being bombarded with the negative electrons that are flowing from your torch. Now, if we had this set up the other way around, what would end up happening is we would get flow from negative, if we put our ground clamp in the negative, we would get our electron flow going negative to positive and ultimately cooking our torch and cooking the tungsten and cooking everything. That is why you have to do it that way because if you set it up the other way around, you would literally light up at 65 amps and you would destroy this torch. You would destroy your tungsten, you destroy the cup, you destroy the torch itself. It would just be kind of a nightmare. Um, your tungsten burns back and does all kinds of stuff. So when you're setting up the machine, you always want to set the ground clamp as positive. And this is true for every aspect of TIG welding. There's never an instance, at least that I know of, where your ground clamp will not be in the positive lead and your torch in the negative lead. So hopefully you guys can understand a little bit of that and realize why it is strange like that. And if you're having problems setting up your TIG welder, and you're burning up tungsten and everything else, you're gonna wanna check to make sure that your polarity is correct. You're gonna wanna make sure, again, that your ground clamp is in the positive and your torch is in the negative. So, now, with that all being said, we are now ready to weld. So in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the machine settings that we just set up, our 65 amps, our DC, our clamp settings and everything else, and we're actually going to stick a couple of pieces of 65 thousandths metal together to show you guys what it's like when you first start to TIG weld. We're going to go over amperage input, heat input. We're going to go over tacking parts together. We're going to go over running continuous beads. We're going to start going over technique. We're going to start going over, you know, speeds and feeds when it comes to filler wire versus heat versus travel speed. We're going to get into a lot, a lot, a lot of information. But in order to get there, we have to go through all of these very basics. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that video. 
I enjoyed making it. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them down in the comments box below and I will do my very best to answer them. I usually answer pretty much all of my comments and questions, so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask a question that you might feel is stupid because truthfully, there are no stupid questions when it comes to welding. I still learn things every single day and I will not deny that. There are things that I still don't know. There are techniques that I still don't know and there are improvements that I can make. So you know what, no matter how good of a welder you are, there's always going to be room for you to improve and to learn new things. So please don't hesitate to ask questions. And if it's an answer to a question that I don't have the answer for, I will find it for you and we will get it all solved out. So thank you so much for watching this one. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we're now six subscribers away from 20,000. So if you guys could hit that subscribe button, get this channel up over 20,000, that would be absolutely spectacular. So hope everybody's doing all right. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Stay tuned for next Saturday. We'll have episode four, which we're actually going to start doing some welding, guys. So have a spectacular whatever day it is.